Ladies and gentlemen, Sidestrafe back with another look at Star Citizen. And it has, of course, been a while. I believe the last video I made for this title was uh, featuring my ship in the hangar bay. At the time, Arena Commander had not existed. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, Star Citizen, of course, now has a dogfighting module where you can go in and either play against AI cooperatively, solo, or you can go ahead and fight other players and that's what you're looking at here this is just uh, some simple combat that I was able to film last night this game starts out as a 1v1 and uh, we're joined by a few other players a little later on but for the most part it was a good way for me to uh, just get used to the controls and uh, learn a little bit more about uh, dogfighting in space now, please keep in mind that everything you're going to see here is a work in progress. You'll probably notice that there's a few hiccups, some glitches, uh, some frame rate drops. The game stalls out a little bit. Uh, there might be some sound problems here and there. Uh, the game is, of course, in development still. Long ways to go. This is just really early content. Uh, basically, it's their way of throwing the backers a bone because let's face it they have so much money now that uh, they have to give us something and I'm glad that they continue to update the game and give us new content and uh, that they allow people to play with the ships that they're spending so much money on so for those that are wondering in this uh, game I was using a mouse and keyboard to dogfight and I went into this thinking that I would need a joystick I had some viewers on a live stream recently tell me that I could get away with using an Xbox 360 gamepad. I had tried that, but I had a lot of trouble with my aim, and I found myself needing to go back to the mouse and keyboard, where things improved drastically. You can see a bit of a hiccup there uh, that I had experienced after spinning out during that collision. But uh, yeah, so here you can see that my aim isn't too bad. It might be a little floaty, might need to adjust uh, the sensitivity a little bit. But otherwise, it was a lot better than what I had experienced on the 360 uh, controller and probably better than what I will personally experience with a joystick. I'm not really good with game pads or joysticks. I have a feeling that I'll be spending most of my time on the mouse and keyboard as long as it works uh, properly. One thing I have to say that I'm really impressed with in this latest version is the improved sound effects. Uh, when I had first played the Arena Commander, the sounds for the guns was a bit disappointing. Everything else sounded okay, but uh, the guns were pretty weak. And uh, there's a huge improvement in the gunfire now. The chain guns on my wings sound absolutely fantastic. Feels like there's a lot of power behind them. Uh, and I suppose some of you were thinking, well, in space you shouldn't really even be able to hear most of this stuff, especially hearing ships whiz by you and things like that. But honestly, I think that having those sounds adds to the experience. I like that it's simulated so that you can hear something. It just gives you some sort of feedback, you know? And I'm an audiophile. I love good audio in games. I think it's really important and often overlooked by developers. I'm glad that they've decided to add some really fantastic audio here. And well, let's face it, with all the money they have currently, there's not really much of an excuse to not hire the best and do it right. Now in regards to the visuals, not a whole lot has changed, but not much needs to change. The game is absolutely stunning. It's jaw-dropping even, and I think when Chris Roberts first announced the title, he said, look, I want to make a truly next generation PC game. I want to take advantage of the latest and greatest in PC hardware and technology. And when I heard that, I was already on board with the project because that's been one of my complaints over uh, the years. It's just the fact that we're being held back. We're being held back by console ports. And uh, it's nice to see something that's from the ground up a PC game. And it's amazing what can be done in gaming when you build for the the highest common denominator instead of something that can barely cook a hot dog. I mean, this is what you're backing. When you're putting your money into Star Citizen, you're expecting something that's going to take advantage of your expensive video card, your SLI configuration, your six-core processor. This is finally 
the game for, well, let's face it, the PC Master Race. This is the game that they've been looking for. And uh, I don't consider myself to be a PC elitist at all. However, I just simply think it comes down to common sense. When you see games being developed for uh, a less powerful system first and then ported over to a more powerful platform, it doesn't make any sense. Imagine you're in Photoshop and you take a thumbnail and you try to blow that up to a higher resolution. It's going to look like garbage. What you're supposed to do is start with the higher resolution image and scale that down. Game development has been backwards. They've been starting out with console development, low resolutions, low frame rates, low textures, and they've been trying to blow that up for the PC later when you need to start with the more powerful system and then scale down from there. But hey, that's probably way too logical for today's publishers, and I'm sure it doesn't make them the maximum amount of coin that they need to pay for their second yacht. Anyways, millions of dollars later, we have Star Citizen, so let's get off of the aesthetics topic and go into the gameplay that you're seeing within this video. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this had started out as a 1v1. Uh, you can see that we are joined by an ally, and uh, later on, I think there is somebody else that joins the other team, but then another guy leaves, so it just ends up being 2v1, if not even 3v1. Uh, and then eventually we just get to the point where there's nobody at all on the opposing force. But uh, I wanted to stay in the match because I felt that it was a good opportunity to hone my skills. It was some good practice. Uh, I did play another match after this that was filled to the brim with players and wow was it difficult uh, not only are you having to dodge these uh, asteroids but you're having to uh, of course just evade missiles and all kinds of incoming fire it is truly challenging even though I was able to successfully play this game and have a lot of fun playing with the mouse and keyboard it is still very difficult just trying to fly uh, through these asteroids is a nightmare in itself. You get a lot of collision alerts. You have to master the usage of your thrusters and your uh, afterburners, I guess, to just kind of stay away from these rocks. On top of that, the whole mission area is kind of small. It's really easy to get yourself killed by flying too close to the uh, border or the edge of the map, I guess you could say. And I notice a lot of players using it as a tactic. They'll try to fly really close to it, kind of skirting the edge, and pull up really quick in hopes that their pursuer will almost get slingshotted into it and, of course, instantly killed. Speaking of slamming into things, those asteroids are extremely lethal. And it's not like other flight sims in space where a lot of the rocks and debris in space are just eye candy. If you can see it here, you can hit it, and it's usually going to screw up your ship or at least send you for a spin. Uh, it really does truly measure your worth as a pilot, and I'm fine with it. I am totally fine with the game being difficult. I like that there are structures in space that you can hide behind, that you can use as cover. I like that you can use the asteroids to your advantage if you're being tailed, uh, because in many cases, when you have a missile lock or somebody's right behind you, it's really hard to lose them in a standard uh, flight simulation, especially if you're playing like a World War II flight sim. You got somebody on your back. For the most part, if he's behind you, you've already messed up. He's going to get you eventually unless you can somehow pull off an insane maneuver or you have a friend take him off you. In this game, if somebody's behind you, there is a good chance that you can lose that guy just flying through a uh, part of the asteroid field. There are some areas that are really tight, which means that if you can get through, there is a good chance that the other guy just can't. He might mess up and go flying right into an asteroid or other uh, object. Now, as you can see here, my ship is taking one hell of a beating, and I believe at some point, if not now, my top-mounted weapon system, which is some sort of laser cannon, gets stuck and therefore becomes pretty much useless unless I can somehow align it into a firing solution. But uh, my Gatling guns on the wings are still intact, so for the most part I resort to using those as primaries. Uh, I try to regulate my laser cannon usage anyway as it does take away from the ship's power, which means that shields will not regenerate as fast if I'm using those things. 
Now, I'm sure some of you are watching this and wondering why I did or didn't do something. And again, I have to point out that this is just one of my first few matches, uh, especially in a live fire situation multiplayer. And really, in this matchup, I'm just trying to figure out flight mechanics and weapons usage. So I know I'm not doing everything that I could be, but I did have a whole lot of fun uh, playing and I look forward to a lot more flight time in the future and perhaps even with different ships in other uh, missions or maps. Somewhere around here I think you'll see me test my uh, top mounted weapon system and you'll see that it's not uh, aligned properly. There it is. And it's just not shooting uh, where it should be so I know that the guns are stuck so I stop using them and I just switch to 100% Gatling guns and pour it on this guy just missing some debris there again the thing I'm most afraid of in this mission is just uh, asteroids and uh, debris everywhere so you can see there just little rocks even managing to flip me around wasn't too sure about what happened here I felt like I didn't hit anything too large but maybe it was a glitch I'm not sure maybe that rock spun me around uh, I think eventually I take a look at the exterior of my ship and I'm actually surprised that I'm still alive when we see the amount of damage that I have actually suffered but uh, the other thing to note it looks like we have uh, two players on our team one leaves while another joins the enemy here we are in the external shot now and uh, once I get the frontal view you can see that one of my intakes is just blown out <laughs> uh, man that's a lot of damage I really have no idea why I'm still alive this is one tough ship and uh, I have been enjoying it now here you can see we've transitioned a little bit uh, unfortunately the enemy left and uh, so me and my ally here just decided to stare at each other a little bit I think one thing I noticed with those ships is that the landing gear in some cases looks like it's always down uh, I'm guessing just a glitch. I think there is one more player on our team flying around. You can kind of hear him out there, and we're just shooting past each other. I start to look around just in the nick of time. Flyby, Maverick, he is not. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do. I think he was just trying to buzz me, but uh, I took a bit of a spin there. Again, your shields are really the only thing uh, keeping you up after something like that, but then you can see that these players are starting to get a little bored I think it's time to move on out of here but uh, anyways ladies and gentlemen I think that wraps up today's look at Star Citizen this is of course only the arena commander and just a small taste of what the game is supposed to offer I say supposed to because Chris Roberts definitely has a lot of promises to keep and uh, this is just the beginning so not gonna hold my breath but I will keep my eyes and ears open uh, to this title. I know many of you have been questioning whether I'm going to continue to look at this game and the answer is of course yes uh, but there just isn't a whole lot to look at right now and what there has been has been very glitchy and I don't really want to showcase a completely broken game. Uh, now I am seeing some improvement so I think I can start to uh, film and of course stream a bit more of it. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining me. I will definitely see you on the next one.